Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of It Goes Off. We just finished round 23 and we have got one more round before we head in to playoff action. And still Grantly, we are none the wiser as to who is actually going to participate in the final series. And uh, so we're going to get your thoughts on that just in just a minute. But uh, also stick around because we've got Dylan Boucher coming up. An interview with Dylan Boucher. The superstar from the New Zealand break has been in the league uh, about 10 years. I think 2003 was his first year in the competition as he's announced his retirement. He'd be looking to go out with a big bang with uh, a back-to-back-to-back championship wins with the breakers. So stick around, looking forward to catching up with him. But Grantley, round 23, it would appear as though the Wollongong Hawks, they are in the box seat. It's a simple equation for them. Win and they are in. Simple. For the others, Melbourne Tigers, Cairns, Taipans, New Zealand Breakers, still in a hard-fought battle. Uh, It's going to go down to the wire, and I think probably it's the old case of uh, win or go home. You know, and that's uh, and the thing is, it's 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 still a little complicated um, with one round to go. It is, but the the bottom line is for for uh, the Wollongong Hawks, they beat the Adelaide Thirty Sixes at home. Win and you're in. Win. And you're in. It's as simple as that. Yep. Uh, not a bad little catchphrase from you going to your editorial skills in your uh, previous life. Uh, but Grantly, it was round 23. Uh, games are plenty. Talk us through all the winners and losers. Certainly. Well, it started with the New Zealand Breakers 114 over the Melbourne Tigers 84. The Tigers really taking a pummeling there. Oof. Thomas Abercrombie with 24 points on 9 of 13 field goals. The Breakers actually shot 43 of 75 from the field, which is pretty good, with 26 assists. They had 60 to 42 points in the paint. They put that one away with a 54-34 second half. Chris Golding had 22 points for the Tigers. The Wollongong Hawks, 81 over the Sydney Kings, 74. Our man, Adris De Leon, Mm -hmm. 25 points for the Hawks. Six players in double digits for Wollongong. They outscored the Kings 51 to 29 over the middle two quarters. Darnell Lazar, 17 points, 10 rebounds with a solid double-double for the Kings. The Cairns Taipan, 76, Adelaide 36 is 73. For the Snakes, Jamar Flip Wilson had 19 points on 6 of 10 shooting. For the Sixers, Anthony Petrie, 19 points, 8 of 13 field goals and 7 rebounds. The Townsville Crocs kept their playoff hopes alive. Can you believe we're still saying that? And put a dagger in the Melbourne Tigers, 75-73. Gary Irvin, 13 points, 8 assists and the game-winning 3 for the Crocs. The Crocs were 10 of 23 from outside the arc. They had a 26-19 fourth quarter. Chris Golding again, 26 points for the Tigers. Adam Ballinger had a three to win the game, which missed. And Tommy Greer's shot to tie at the buzzer also missed. Perth Wildcats, 70. Cairns Taipans, 53. Jesse Wagstaff, 13 points for the Wildcats. The Wildcats only went 11 of 21 on free throws, so a bit of work to do there. They trailed 21-16 at quarter time outscored the Taipans 54 to 32 the rest of the way. Cam Tregar, 13 points, eight rebounds for the Snakes, who were just four of 20 on three-point field goals. They were, and uh, let's take a look at the NBL ladder, and there you see at the top of the table, New Zealand and Perth, they've been there all season, and they will remain there, Grantly, and the New Zealand Breakers, of course, will have the home court advantage right throughout the playoffs. Then we've got Wollongong and Cairns. Wollongong, uh, 12 and 15, as we mentioned, beat the Adelaide 36ers at home and they will see playoff action. The Cairns Taipans, they got to beat the Melbourne Tigers and at home, which given their form, you'd say is a realistic prospect as well. Then you've got Sydney, Melbourne and Townsville still with a chance, but uh, requiring a little bit of help along the way. And then the Adelaide 36ers at eight and 19 are done and have been done for quite some time. Now, Grantley, it's time to move on because we have a, a very special guest I mean, coming it's time up. for you to move on. No, it's not. Uh, we're doing, you're doing a, a terrific job here and- No, 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 I said it's time for you to move on. Oh, me to move on. Yeah. Oh, that's not very complimentary. Yeah. But uh, Grantley, each and every week, we like to knock around uh, some of the issues and the goings on in the INET NVL in a little segment we call- Kick it off. Nice. We're gonna start it off this week with one of the all time greats of the NBL. We mentioned in the intro, Dylan Boucher, hanging up the the uh, playing boots at the end of this season and uh, he has been a fantastic contributor to the NBL 
won a title at the Brisbane Bullets, won a couple of titles with the uh, New Zealand Breakers and also played a season with the Perth Wildcats. So he's been much travelled and everywhere he's gone, he's been well-liked for the tenacious way he goes, goes about it. And he's been uh, kind enough to join us on the program today. Dylan, what a fantastic career you've had, not just in the NBL, but also with the New Zealand Breakers. Uh, how's it been? Has it been a tough decision to finally call it a day on your NBL career? Um, to be honest, um, first, good day guys, and, and good to be on your show, but uh, it, hasn't, it hasn't been a hard decision. It had, for the last few years, I've been contemplating it, and um, my body's really told me this year that, that it needs to, needs to start having a bit more of a rest than what it has in between games. So for me, it's been um, the preseason was where it hit home to me when I was really struggling in the preseason, getting the body back where it needed to be. And for me, it was, you know, I'm going to miss a lot of the things about basketball, but um, right now I'm, I've made a decision and, and I'm very happy with it. Andre Lomanis does a great job with uh, nursing you guys through. Has, uh, has he had to tailor the uh, training regime for you this season uh, like it appears he's done over the last couple of seasons with CJ Bruton? Yeah, I think um, one, of, one of Andre's strengths has been able to monitor the workload of guys and, and he's definitely um, been, been aware of that with me. And, and for me, any time we've needed to have a break or, or tailor, taper it off, but he's, he's allowed us to have the green light to do that. But... Uh, I'm the sort of guy I don't like to take too many shortcuts or too many days off or anything like that. So I've tried to try to do as much as I can with the team. And uh, but one thing he's done is, is made sure he's done a great job of making sure that the older guys on the team have their necessary rest and uh, and are ready come game time. Dylan, you you certainly don't take many shortcuts uh, on the court. You're uh, one of these guys that uh, knows the uh, the shortest uh, way to get from or the quickest way to get from A to B is a straight line. And I guess your reputation. Uh, as a player is, is no frills. When did you kind of realise that, you know, that was your your way to be a basketball player rather than try to be, a I guess, a finesse player? Yeah, it's a good question. Obviously, growing up, um, you know, I used to be a scorer and, and like, you know, you, I guess you don't get to this level being, being able to do something. So when I was younger, I, I didn't realise I wasn't as athletic as anyone and wasn't as good as everyone is at the other things until I got probably to the, to the higher level and it wasn't probably till... Uh, so I got um, into the National League in New Zealand where I realised that you know if I wanted to stay at that, the top level that I needed to be able to do things that other people couldn't do. So I started focusing on areas of the game that, that people, I guess, don't see as important as other areas but are so important to winning a basketball game. And you know that's where I started being able to use my, my I guess, my knowledge of the game to be able to shoot passing lanes and get steals and things like that and, and make passes and, and throw lead passes to guys running onto the ball and, and putting the ball in a position where shooters could get their shot off quicker and things like that. And I just started, I guess, focusing on those areas rather than rather than scoring and things like that. And then I found that there was a little niche for each each team I was in for a player like that. And I guess the rest is history. And that's how I guess I've ended up playing the way I do. Uh, Dylan, I guess, uh, you know, we're on the verge of the playoffs. And everyone's talking uh, about New Zealand and Perth as the, the two big teams. You play each other uh, this weekend. How will you guys go about, I guess, your, your playoff routine? Will it change much from what you've done? And how do you feel about, uh, I guess, your chances of a three-peat? Well, even on that, are you actually going to send a team over to play the last game? Because you, you've got top spot r- wrapped up. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess we're in, a, we're in a very fortunate situation where we're, we're going into our last game and, and we don't necessarily need a win. But for us, you know, as far as we're concerned, it's all about momentum going into playoffs. And, you know, although... I'm sure the coaching staff will do a good job of resting the necessary players. We're still going over the Perth to win the game and, and we still want to continue our, our win streak the way it's going. And always, always, all year we talk about peaking come playoff time and I think the, the perfect game um, for us leading into playoffs is against the second place team who, are, who have, you know, have won twice against us this year already. So, you know, it's a team that's had some success against us and we want to go over there and put ourselves up against, you know, the best, best team we possibly can. We think that's Perth right now and, we're excited to go over there and play them at the last game of the season. But as far as playoffs are concerned, we, we haven't looked too far ahead. We've just focused each game as it's come. And, you know, a lot of people have talked about us and Perth matching up in the final, but there's still some, some of this, you know, there's a lot of quality teams fighting out for that third and fourth spot. And any time you forget about those teams, they'll come and beat you. So for us, we're focused on Perth. And then once that game's out of the way, then we'll, we'll hopefully know our opponent of who we're playing and then we'll start focusing on them. Dylan, you're talking like a coach, take yeah. it one game at a time, Beautiful. but you should know that in corporate sales, you've got to pump it up to the max. You've got to be talking about, we're going, to, we're going to jump on their throat, we're going to cut their head off, we're going to win the title. So, <laughs> Yeah, if I had my different hat on, I'd probably be talking to you differently. 
No, brilliant stuff. Um, really appreciate your time today. You've been a fantastic contributor to New Zealand basketball and Australian basketball and the NBL over a long, long period of time, and we wish you nothing but success uh, in the future. Yeah, thanks, guys, and I just want to say thanks to everyone who's um, you know supported not only myself but the teams I've been on throughout my career. It's been an awesome run, and it's going to be sorely missed in my career, but um, everything has to come to an end, and I'm more than happy for it to be this year. Good man, and uh, good luck in the playoffs. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Dill. Now, Grantly, uh, you and I have had our say, and Dylan Bouch has had his say, and very nice it was. It was a good say. It was a nice, tidy say, but uh, we love to get the feedback and want you to join in the conversation, and the best way to do that is uh, contact us on the social media. Uh, Twitter is the best way to get Grantly and I, Andrew Gaze 10 or Grantly Bernard, but probably the most efficient way is to hook in to the NBL Facebook page, and there's a lot of conversation going on which you can uh, join in. NBL Twitter, at NBL. And very good point. And this is a little segment we call the Mark Zuckerberg Minute. And uh, this week, we're going to start it off. Oh, hang on, before we do that, we give away prizes. A we Dylan come Boucher. bearing gifts. <laughs> a Dylan Boucher. And this week, we're going to give you a Dylan Boucher to uh, NBL television, that's right. An NBL TV subscription where you can watch all the playoff action live on the internet. It's a terrific prize and uh, it goes above and beyond that. In the off season, you still get the uh, membership and you get to see all the international games. All the international games, boomers, opals, the whole enchilada. Terrific stuff. Now, what we have here, we've got Graham E. Bradley and he asks, has Ingalls done enough with Barcelona? Joe to, Ingalls. That is Joe Ingalls, correct. To make it to the NBA next year? Or do you think he should look for another Euro contract where he can start, get quality playing times? Good point. Joe Ingalls, to mine, is an NBA quality player. He's playing in an outstanding team at, at Barcelona, but I think he is ready to make, to take the, the next step. He's in a very comfortable situation, makes a lot of money at Barcelona. But in my opinion, on the back of what we saw in London, where he was nothing short of superb, I think that he would come under the, uh, the eye of a lot of NBA teams. We saw it with Aaron Baines just mm. recently. The Spurs picked him up. What are your th thoughts? Look, I think uh, Joe Ingles has obviously been on the NBA radar since mm. day one, um, probably before he even got to the, yep. to the NBL. So... He's known he's played summer league with the Golden State Warriors. Yep. Um, they've had a good hard look at him. I think he's probably now 25. Yep. So he's not young anymore. In, well, in, in he's a, still young. But he's not a kid. No. He's not a kid anymore. He's mature. He's a mature adult. Experienced. Right? The body is filled out. He's got a lot of Strong. experience. He's actually been starting for Barcelona. He's been playing good minutes. Mm. And I think, put it this way, there's not too many better jobs mm. than playing Mm. Or, and living mm. in Barcelona. No. I would think it's probably a mutual thing. I think Barcelona likes Joe Ingles. Joe Ingles likes Barcelona. So that may get extended. But I think the NBA opportunity is, is probably going to happen. But it's the whole thing. Mm. Right place, right time. Yep. You've got to be in the right place at the right time to make the NBA. It doesn't matter how good you are. Yep. And if you're trying to look for a, a comparison for Joe Ingles... And I know he's left-handed, but to me, he is the uh, reincarnation of a Tony Kukoc. That inside-outside can play the two, the three spot, can handle the ball. Just, uh, he's got it all. And uh, I'm hoping that he gets that opportunity because he's good enough and it'd be great to see another Aussie in the NBA. Having said that, Barcelona, terrific situation. Uh, next up, we have Perkins Santos. Perkins Santos. G'day, Perk. Is Cameron Glidden the next Ben Madgen, Grantly Bernard? Is he? He could be. <laughs> could be. Well, I think there's a good comparison. I, I think there's. I think he's got the potential to do that. His, his last probably quarter of the season mm. has, has really been a breakout time for him, and I think he's mm. he's really going to be one to watch next season. It is, and uh, I think also uh, when you look at Ben Madgen, first year or so took him a little while to really crank it up, and now he's an MVP candidate, uh, leading scorer in the competition, and it's just been the mainstay for the uh, Sydney Kings. Mm. So it, it's a, it, when you think of that pathway and some of the players that are coming mm. back to, uh, from college, it does take them a little time to find their feet in the NBL. Oh, for sure. It's not an easy transition. No. Um, you can't underestimate it. So if, if Cam Glidden's to become the next Ben Madgen, mm -hmm. 
Would that make him a Ken Gludgeon? <laughs> that is just side-splitting stuff by you. <laughs> uh, lastly, I've got this one from Nick Godsell, a regular. Nick, g'day, Nick. And he, he asks, apart from a certain St. Mary's guard, Matthew Delavidova, what is your mail on which Aussie soon-to-be college graduates might be hot commodities for the NBL next season? Uh, there's a few out there, but the two that I think could be real game changers for teams, Ryan Brockoff is a very, very good player, played at Valparaiso, and in fact, last week saw him hit the game winner in a tournament um, play, so he's been there at Valparaiso for four years, I think grew up in, played with Frankston here in Victoria, AIS graduate, he's uh, one that I think could have an immediate impact, and the other one is Brock Modem, played at uh, Washington, uh, Washington State I think it is. And um, big guy, 6'10", Queensland kid, left hand up. Both of those guys you would expect are going to have opportunities in Europe as well as Australia. But uh, he's hoping, along with Matthew Delavidova, that, um, that they do come back and play in the NBL. Uh, do, do you know of any others, Grantley? Uh, not off the top of the head. I mean, the, the, the one kid I'm kind of interested to see if he does come back to the NBL eventually is Anthony Drimmick. Yes. I, I think he's... Uh, I guess just because... At Boise, and congratulations yep. to Boise. They've just made it to yep. the NCAA tournament. Uh, the, the brother of Frank. of Frank Drimmick, who was a boomer. And I guess that's where the interest is, that Frank Drimmick was such a, a great young player and, mm. and, and so much was expected of him. But the talk is that mm. the brother... He's a couple of years away. He's, he's, he's even better, mm. or going to be even better. Yeah. He, sorry, could be even better. Yes. Uh, he's a, there's a few in the system that are a couple of years away, but... Um, yeah, looking for those ones that, that are available right now. Uh, Grantly, you have the very, very tough task of uh, picking a winner. And who are you going to go with? Uh, that's a very good question. I actually did like the uh, second question uh, that we had. That's uh, Perkins. Perkins Santos asking about uh, Ken Gludgeon. Well, there you go, Perk. Your happy days because you are going to be watching, hopefully going to visit and see the NBL finals. But if not, you've got it covered on the internet with uh, NBL TV. And for those of you who haven't subscribed, some really good um, Packages. offers to see the NBL finals. You, you can actually get the NBL TV finals pass, yes. which is available now. Go online at nbl.com.au. Get on board, NBL yeah. finals pass. Uh, you can sign up for that. You can get the whole, as we said, off season with the Boomers and the Opals. Take your right through to, uh, to next season. Grantly, uh, this is the ultimate round. The last round of the 2012-13 Ironet NBL season. Last chance for the good folk, for many of the good folk, to go out there and see their team. So please, inform them where they need to go to see some high-quality basketball action. Okay. Friday night, it all starts with the Sydney Kings against the Townsville Crocodiles. That is a big-time playoff game. That is on 1 at 9.30. Another big playoff game is the Cairns Taipans against the Melbourne Tigers. And rounding out the Friday night action, the Perth Wildcats against the New Zealand Breakers. The top two go head to head. On Saturday, we've got the Wollongong Hawks against the Adelaide 36ers. The Hawks win that, win, and they are in. And on Sunday, to round out the regular season, the Melbourne Tigers against the Townsville Crocodiles. That one is to be shown nationally on 10 at one o'clock. Well, at the end of the day, we won't know who's actually going to be in until uh, Sunday afternoon, so an exciting time uh, out there and a nervous time, I'd imagine, for a lot of coaches and players, and good luck to them all. Grantly, what a show, a long show, but it, it's necessary um, because it's a very exciting time and we need to pay homage to uh, Dylan Boucher, but we also need to say thanks to those that support this great game and this wonderful, wonderful program. And it all starts with our naming rights sponsor, IINET. Connect better. <laughs> Ten. And one. Sporting. And far. And Virgin Australia. They have been with us the whole season, and we're hoping that they're going to be with us again for many, many years to come because they are wonderful partners of this great game of ours. Grantly, you have been terrific today, as you are each and every week. And uh, it's finals time. You can feel it in the air, the excitement, the anticipation. And uh, we are going to be back next week to break down the playoffs. We thank you for your company and look forward to it again next week on the number one podcast for the Ironnet NBL in the universe. You know it's called, but we want to refresh your memory just in case. It's called It Goes Up. <laughs>